we are going to get uh, another open micer up here, we have uh, a man who's been up, he's taken our class, this is a graduate, we, we hold him up as a poster child for our successful graduates. Um, I believe this is either his third or fourth time on the open mic, I'm not positive. Uh, but you will hopefully uh, recognize him if you've been here before and appreciate the fact that he's back. It's been a while, the one and only, Nick Newland. Come on, boy. On my 23rd birthday, my girlfriend Linda gave me an incredible gift. She told me to sit down on the edge of the bed and close my eyes. <laughs> then she asked me to put my arms out in front of me and I could feel her reaching over me and putting my arms through these leather straps. <laughs> I felt something hard in my lap, and when I opened my eyes, I was holding an accordion, a squeeze box, a beautiful white wooden accordion with the word Carmen painted across the front. It had 48 mysterious buttons on the left-hand side and two octaves of keyboard on the right. And when I put my finger on one of the keys and pulled the bellows and pushed them back in again, the sound that vibrated out of it sounded like the voice of Ella Fitzgerald. It touched a string inside of me that connected my ears to my heart, and I was in love. My love affair with the accordion has continued for the last 26 years, but I only had Carmen for less than a week. I was so thrilled to have an accordion. I had played keyboard and piano since I was seven years old, and at the time I was traveling around as Niccolo the Gypsy Juggler at Renaissance fairs, but I had nothing to play in the act. I had a cheesy Casio keyboard, but that was not doing it for me and the accordion opened up a whole new world of musical possibilities. Thrilled, I called my musician friend Paul and told him I was going to bring him over something that would blow his mind. And I hastily packed the car and drove my, from my DC apartment to his house in the suburbs. When I got there and I opened the trunk of my station wagon, Carmen was gone. Somehow, in my haste to pack the car, I had left her on the sidewalk. I didn't even have a case for her. I had left Carmen naked on the streets of Washington, <laughs> D.C. I said goodbye to Paul and I hurried back to my apartment, but she was nowhere to be found. I plastered the neighborhood with signs, lost accordion, reward, great sentimental value. But she was gone forever. I cried bitter tears, the first time I would ever cried over an accordion. <laughs> but not the last. <laughs> I bravely soldiered on. Two weeks later, I bought another accordion at an antique store. It was beautiful, but it did not sound like Carmen. I took accordion lessons from an old vaudevillian named Merv Kahn. He told me how to play the buttons and how to hold my elbows, and he explained to me how joyous the accordion was, something I already knew. Well, two years later, I had another girlfriend. Joanne, who is now my wife. And on my 25th birthday, she told me to sit on the edge of the bed and close my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I was holding another accordion. This one more petite than Carmen, with brown carved wood and only 12 buttons on the side. But when I played one of the notes, it sounded like the violin of Stefan Grappelli. I didn't think I could ever feel feelings like that again for an accordion, but I did. And I played that accordion everywhere. I traveled to Europe with it. Joanne and I played it in our show together. I even sat in and played in blues bands and rock bands. Who knew that the much maligned accordion, but it was almost as many jokes as the bagpipes could rock so hard. But four years later, fate intervened. And on the way to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Festival, 
coming out of a rest stop. Once again, I packed my car in haste and somehow left Venezia on the top of the car. And driving down I-81, I saw it fly off the roof of my rear view mirror and bounce horribly on the highway, smashing to bits. I pulled the car over and ran out on the highway, oblivious to the traffic, and scooped Venezia up like a grieving mother. Once again, crying bereaved tears over a squeeze box. When I got back to the side of the road, Joanne was standing with her arms like this, and she said, I wonder if you'd risk your life like that for me. I didn't have anything to say, and Venezia wasn't talking. But this was more serious because we needed an accordion for the show and we were heading for the festival. Now this is the 1980s. There were no cell phones. So we pulled over and we found a phone booth and a phone book and miraculously an accordion salesperson in York, PA. There was a guy. He had a house full of beautiful accordions. I couldn't believe it. I played all the accordions in the house and I settled on a beautiful one with 48 buttons that said Imperial 3 on it. Okay, not all accordions can have sexy names. <laughs> but when I played a note, it sounded like the laughter of a child. And I've had that accordion for 20 years it's with my constant companion. I guess I've gotten better as I've gotten older at taking care of my accordions. And uh, maybe my girlfriends too. <laughs> or maybe I've just got better packing the car. <laughs> Thank you. Both of you. So, what do I take out of all this accordion love and loss? Well, first of all, some things are just things, but other things are more than things. They're friends and companions, and they can actually bring something out of you that you didn't know you had. And second, things come and go. But what's inside you stays. And if you have music inside you, there will always be an accordion out there with your name on it. Still, I will never forget Carmen. Thank you.